Vinny from Jersey Shore was on New Rory and Moore, and they actually brought up Brendan randomly. Randomly. Vinny from from Jersey Shore, the fucking legendary reality TV show, was on New Rory and Moore, and they were talking about stand-up because allegedly Vinny does fucking stand-up. I had no fucking idea. And he was talking about his come up and how he's coming to the scene and industry and how he's trying to do it the right way. And of course, because you're talking about how doing it the right way, he had to mention Brendan because Brendan did it the wrong way. So let's play the clip. And back and forth with the audience when I get up there that a lot of audi uh, comedians don't go through. And I have to be funny because I'm already on TV. Yeah. And they're expecting you to be even funnier than probably the regular comedian. Yeah, I'm already <laughs> judged harsher. Technically. Yo, yeah, big up pizza. Yeah, we're here, man. We're out here. We're out here. You know, we're out here. We're out here feeding our families. We're out here fucking putting on for the black race. We're out here trying to fucking break stereotypes and all that malarkey. So if you like the journey, you like what you see, you see what you like, like the fucking stream, Peter, and anybody else joining. Like the stream. Don't be tight. Like the stream. Thank you. Technically, I'm like an like an open micer. Yeah. We're doing it like for a year. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's not the first time I've ever been on stage, but it's definitely challenging. But as far as the co the comics and shit, they're they're really welcoming. Also, what I do is like I'll do like my Vinny and Friends show at the stand and I'll put a bunch of other comics on before me. Mm. So as long as you have like a good ego and stuff, because I've heard horror stories with like like John Mayer doing stand up and T.I. and people like that, yeah. you know, where Steve-O got a lot of shit. I mean, ended up being pretty good at it for the most yeah. part he um, found and his he, little niche and yeah. stuff yeah. brendan schwab is probably the most hated human being on the internet but... <laughs> it's beautiful isn't it brendan Shaw is probably the most hated human being on the internet i'd say probably the most hated human being in the comedy scene i don't think the internet i think there's other people that take the you know take that mantle my guy dsp wings boogie keemstar uh logan paul you know there's a few other people out there but i but he's definitely the most hated in comedy for sure but yeah yeah i've seen it be tough for some people when they already had a yeah. name and something else to try to do stand-up yeah comedy yeah you can't just like go up. also like i don't know I, I love like i'm more of like a norman guy i like like writing jokes and like because i i used to study like improv and sketch comedy at the school ucb in this he went to the same uni as bgl San Francisco School of Stand-Up Comedy. <laughs> imagine going to... Imagine telling your parents... Only white people could do that, you know? Imagine going to tell your parents you're going to college to study stand-up, to study stand up, to study comedy, to study improv. Only a white person could get away telling their parents they're going to go into debt or they're going to use their savings to go to college to fucking... <laughs> to performing arts. You're like, what? Performing arts? You better perform your art outside <laughs> the city. Yeah, so I kind of just like take that formula and put it on stage. A lot of times, like, you know, people will go up there and it's not no fault of their own, but they like start telling stories mm -hmm. and they're like looking for the funny parts and stuff. I'm not like that. I feel okay. like that can set you up for people to be like, what the fuck is this? You know, because this was funny to your friends, but right. not yeah. right now. I'm more of like a setup. I know where the punchline's coming. At least like there's some kind of semblance of like an act. And that, that still bombs too. But that's the way I look at it. He made a good point here, you know. And it's something that I've been thinking about a lot, having watched. Because I think this is the most stand-up I've ever watched in my entire life has been during this series, Is Joe Rogan Funny? The latest episode is actually out on my Patreon. Make sure you check it out part five is available now on my patreon is joe rogan funny i'm gonna run through all his specials watch them all react to them in real time and upload them onto patreon i'm only uploading them onto patreon because if i love them on youtube they'll take them down so subscribe to the patreon and you get access to watch it and this is the i think this is the most stand-up i've watched and i have to be honest right even though this one in particular this special that i watched and reacted to which is joe rogan live from 2006 even though this is the best one he did I think I laughed the most at this particular one. Now that I've watched all these specials, I I honestly think that whole like story style of comedy. Skew equals San Francisco Stand Up Comedy University. <laughs> Hold on, what did it say? Let's repeat that again. Sufisco. <laughs> I love the <laughs> how it pronounced the abbreviation. Hold on, let's play that again. Sfsky equals San Francisco <laughs> Stand Up Comedy University. Sfsky. <laughs> that sounds like something. That the beginning, that abbreviation sounds like something fucking Delia says to the girls he picks up to the, at the comedy store allegedly. 
<laughs> that sounds like something he says to get them to go to the hotel room. Uh, <laughs> big up Austin Casey. Appreciate you, brother. I honestly think, right? I honestly think this. I honestly think this. As I said before, having watched the way Rogan does stand up and going off of what Vinny just said, I think the best way to do stand up and the most entertaining and the, probably the most value for money for punters is to see somebody go on stage and actually try to do set up punchline, set up punchline, set up punchline. I think that story thing is a bit lazy, it's a bit low effort, and it also opens you up to not being funny. Because as Vinny said, sometimes those stories that you think are funny are funny at the bar, are funny in a podcast studio, are funny on the car ride, but they're not funny when you get on stage and telling strangers. But if you just tell jokes, if you have mostly jokes, like everything is a fucking joke, like even if you look at Brent, even if you look at fucking Rogan special for Burn the Boats, my favorite joke is the one where he says, oh, um, a lesbian who thinks a, a vibrator is a dick is like a guy who thinks a lighter is a dragon, right? That's just a joke. It's not like, oh, I was a story about some guy that bought a lighter and he tried to make it into a torch. No, it's just a joke. Whether or not you laugh or not is whatever, but at least it's trying to do a joke. And I think when you're on stage and you're performing and you're a comedian, part of your job should be to make the audience laugh. It shouldn't be to fucking give them Wikipedia fucking paragraphs about the pyramids and shit. Like, it should be about making people laugh. So if you've got an Egypt ancient Egyptian joke, just make it funny. That's it. So I kind of agree with Vinny's take on that. Okay, cool. I'm just going to go on there and I'm going to do set up punchline joke, set up punchline joke. But going back to what Vinny said at the beginning or going back to what they said about uh, about Brendan being the most hated comedian in the world. Let's go back and play that clip one more time so I can give my opinion on it. With the audience when I get up there that a lot of audi uh, comedians don't go through. And I have to be funny because I'm already on TV. Yeah. And they're expecting you to be even funnier than probably the regular comedian. Yeah, I'm probably judged harsher. Technically, I'm like an like an open micer. Yeah. We're doing it like for a year. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's not the first time I've ever been on stage, but it's definitely challenging. But as far as the co the comics and shit, they're they're really welcoming. Also, what I do is like I'll do like my Vinny and Friends show at the stand, and I'll put a bunch of other comics on before me. Mm. So as long as you have like a good ego and stuff, because I've heard horror stories with like. Like John Mayer doing stand up and TI and people like that, yeah. you know, where Steve O got a lot of shit. I mean, ended up being pretty good at it for the most yeah. part. He um, found I mean, his little niche and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Brendan Schwab is probably the most hated human being on the internet, but And I think I think that's why I'm gonna stay on that hill. I'm gonna die on that hill. I remember when I was at a previous stream, was having a debate back and forth about whether or not Brendan did the right thing by taking that showtime special. And I said that it was a wrong decision. Obviously, monetarily, career-wise, it worked out for him. But I think that was the first sign that he wasn't in it for the right reasons. And he wasn't sort of like respecting the traditions of old. And also just trying to make himself like the good guy in stand-up. Because immediately, as soon as he took that special, one year and a half in, it immediately upset like a portion of the stand-up community that probably wouldn't be vocal about it at that time because he was close to Rogan and didn't want to upset him anything and they still wanted to get on the show and stuff. But I'm pretty sure it upset a bunch of people, especially the guys and girls who've been busting their ass doing stand-up for ages and see this guy who's terrible. Not even someone that's good. I think it's different if you're good. If you're good and you're fucking sick in year one, year two, I'd, even though I think you still get hate because comedians are always jealous and backstabbing and shit and love to gossip about each other behind each other's back. I'm sure that's what happen. But I think it'll be a h easier thing to kind of cope with if the person was good. But Brendan's been shit from minute one. Then he gets a stand-up special um, deal with Showtime in year one and a half. It's no surprise that half of the community or industry, I feel like, would have not liked him to begin with straight away. Then when you start doing your own shows, you don't do the regular, you don't do popping shows. Because I remember in the beginning, he was very anti against it. I'm sure in early episodes, I'll probably try and find the clips where he was literally like, no, I'm not going to do the normal way. I'm not going to do open mics. My journey's different. My journey's different. My journey's different. My journey's different. So what he would do, he would just keep booking sh his own shows, have his own fans turn up. They'd obviously sell it out because at that time, Friday Kid was booming and it was super popular. And it would give him a false sense of where he was at in his career.
he was only like two or three years in and he was selling out theaters. It's like, yeah, I'm, I've arrived, I've arrived, but it wasn't an accurate representation of his stand up. And obviously, over time, that crowd started to diminish. People started to see what your stand up was like and it went down. I think if he would have just waited, if you would have just waited two years, maybe max a year and a half, and told Showtime, hey, I appreciate the offer, but I'm not ready yet. Let me take that UFC deal. Let me take that comment. Maybe it was hand in hand. I'm not sure. But if it wasn't and you were able to negotiate, be like, hey, I will hold off on a stand-up special. I'll take that UFC deal. I'll take the below the belt deal. I'll do that shit for you and all the boxing shit. But the stand-up, I'll do it like a year later. I'm sure, in my opinion, it would be a different conversation. You do it a year later, in that year, before you do the special, you go to different clubs, you start doing random spots, you do your whole fucking sets and reps thing, you do actual open mics, and you actually, you know, you actually try at least to appear like you're humble, and you're doing it for the right reasons, and it changes the conversation around you immediately. But I think the way he came in, it almost made it seem like, and I think he did it to Brian a lot, when they, when when first he was selling tickets, it was kind of like their running joke on the pod, oh yeah, I'm sold out, oh yeah, you're not sold out, ha ha ha, it, it kind of made it like, oh, it kind of made it seem like, I only got into this like a year, and I've already done things that you guys haven't done in like 10 I'm just, you know what I mean? I've got this athlete mindset. I'm working hard, sets and reps, blah, 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 blah. So I think that attitude and that ego kind of fucked him from the beginning. And then it kind of like led, I think eventually, of course, to him quitting because there was never any like support really from other comedians because they all kind of knew and were able to suss out that he wasn't in it for the right reasons. That is my humble opinion. Humble opinion. Now again, there is a possibility it wouldn't have mattered because of how he is, people would have had enough everything to say. But I think if he just would have approached it differently, it probably could have helped. It might have helped. It probably could have helped. But in general, it played out how it played out. And I guess it is what it is. What are you guys saying in the stream chat after my nonsensical ramble here? AZ, you're explaining Shub's career. Yes, I am. Ruri, the confused redhead wig. <laughs> Pick up Andrew Tate. From Chris, I just stand up. Joe turned into Schwab. You know what's funny? God's favorite David Guerrero. Rogan didn't turn. No, sorry. Um, Ed Eduardo Madeira. Sorry, Rogan didn't turn into Schwab. Rogan has always been Schwab. You remember before on this stream and other streams, I said before how I couldn't work out why was Rogan booking Brendan early on? Because when Ro Brendan started stand up, Rogan would help him with spots. He put him on the lineup of his Joe Rogan and Friends shows at the Comedy Store. So imagine, Rogan saw Brendan stand up early. He saw the embers, the genesis of You Be Surprised, pod, the You Be Surprised special, before anyone saw it. So he's always known that guy's not funny. Now, what I'm thinking, maybe Rogan saw a bit of himself in Brendan. That's why he put him on the lineup in the first place. We were all thinking about it the wrong way. I was thinking about it the wrong way. I was thinking, why is he on that lineup when he's not good? When actually... Now we've seen with Rogan's style of stand-up, he actually has a lot more in common with Brendan. That kind of, you know, that, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe he's funnier than him on pods, but on stage, there's not much separating them, really. There isn't that much separating them at all. Zero. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. That's probably why he had him on those specials. Like, you know what? Let me get you on stage because you're just like me. You are just like me. Exactly, Don Dutta. Exactly 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 rogan wanted a protege basically and if you think about it properly if you think about it a little bit more that's why they were so close back then that's why brendan was on the jre that much because he saw him like yeah that's my protege that's gonna be the guy he's gonna kind of was it take my man take over the mantle but this is the guy that i'm gonna like nurture and shit but brendan as bgl said in the 10 minutes of Shorb interview, Brendan is like broken in the brain. Like he actually thinks he was going to replace Rogan. So he he had this weird, Rogan was trying to help him and mentor him, giving him some tough love, putting an arm around his shoulder, all this shit. But Brendan was taking it like, Rogan was trying to like dim his star. And then Brendan started to also take the criticism or the feedback personally and thought Rogan was being mean unnecessarily. So he completely read the situation wrong. And then he also, in my opinion, got a bit too comfortable. He got a bit too comfortable. It's like, do you know, like, um, if there's a guy in your group of friends who maybe is the more affluent one, or maybe he's the one who has the house 
where the parents aren't around anymore or they're just or they're always out and working and you go to their house to hang out and chill there's always that one guy in your friend group who takes the piss he's the one that walks in doesn't take off his shoes immediately opens the fridge without asking your friend lies down with his legs up and shit on the chair puts his legs on the table you know he takes the the guy's like generosity and openness and kindness for granted i think brendan did the same thing with rogan he took rogan's like Oh, I'm going to help you out thing for granted. And then of course, the famous clip of him saying bull guy slang too much dick was a manifestation of that like relaxed, not take, you know, taking it for granted. Yeah, you know, that's Rogan. He's my boy, whatever. That was the manifestation of it. Just exposing Rogan blatantly like that. Like, <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Please stop. But yeah, what can you do? What can you do? absolutely yes you guessed it nada nada nothing you can do nothing you can do just let it play out you just have to let it play out okay cool bless cool bless